Welcome to our new video about flanges. If you are working with piping materials, you should definitely take the time and keep on watching until the end of this video, because it will help you on your way to become an expert in everything piping and piping components. Right here, just a very quick advice to you before starting to watch this basic video about flanges. To keep in mind all the information you are about to learn very soon, it's a great idea to take out a piece of paper and pen to write down what you have learned in today's lecture. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to watch more videos teaching you about piping systems, piping components and a lot more about this giant industry. If you are an engineer or someone purchasing or selling steel products, you can greatly benefit from the videos on this channel. So subscribe right now and never miss out watching valuable video content that will give you the knowledge to succeed in your profession. So let us start right away with the question of what flanges basically are. A flange is a method of connecting pipes, valves, pumps and other equipment in order to form a whole piping system. It also provides easy access for cleaning, inspection and modification and that without having too many problems. Next question is, how is a flange connected to other piping components? You got the answer right here. A flange will be integrated into the piping system by either welding or screwing. When dealing with flanges, it is important that you know there are different types of flange facings. We have the flat face, raised face and the ring type joint. So on this slide, let's take a look at different material grades from which pipe flanges are manufactured. Pipe flanges are manufactured in all different kinds of materials. These can be stainless steel, cast iron, aluminum, and even plastic. Most used material is forged carbon steel with machined surfaces. Each flange is special and has its very own characteristics. So whenever you want to choose material from which your flange should be made, always make sure to meet specific function requirements. You can always look at the marking applied on every flange where you will find information on size, pressure rate, what specification it conforms to and also its country of origin. But most important, before ordering your required flange, you should of course also have a good look at code and standards. ASME describes dimensions, dimensional tolerances, etc. while ASTM provides you information of different material qualities. Regarding this topic, I will create another own video that you definitely should also watch. So let us begin with our core topic, which is introducing you to all different types of flanges. Please take a short moment and have a look at my created overview showing you the flange types that we want to talk about right now. So our first flange we want to take a look at is the welding neck flange. This is our best known flange. The flange consists of a ring with bolt holes and a raised part, the so called hub. This raised part provides the required distance between the butt weld of the pipe to flange connection, thus providing sufficient space for easy welding and for being able to assess the weld by means of x-ray. A weld neck flange is the best designed butt weld flange available because of its structure value and ease of assembling. This type of flange is used for high pressure and high temperature application in process piping. The socket weld flange. Socket weld flanges are used in connections of pipe of relatively small dimensions. A socket is a chamber inserted into a flange in which the pipe is positioned before the actual connection is made. 
In this manner, a small pipe is welded to a flange without having to worry about the strength of the weld. Since the pipe has been placed in a kind of holder, the chamber before the weld is actually made. The threaded flange. Just like socket weld flanges, threaded flanges are often used to connect pipes of smaller dimensions and suitable for low temperature and pressure applications. A threaded flange is not welded, but screwed to other components which are also threaded. Alright, so let's move on to our next type of flange, the slip-on flange. To me, the slip-on flange is a very interesting kind of flange, because when using a slip-on flange, the pipe, the actual pipe, will be inserted into the flange as a whole. And that does work because the inside diameter is slightly bigger than the pipe's outside diameter. You can use the slip-on flange in an environment for low temperature and pressure application. And it's available in large sizes to connect bigger piping components. Let's move on to the next type of flange. The lap joint flange. A lap joint flange is primarily used for carbon and low alloy steel piping systems and is mainly used when frequent dismantling is necessary. Please note that whenever you find yourself dealing with a lap joint flange is that they always come in two parts, alright? So once you need the actual lap joint flange and in addition to that you need a stub end. Alright, so now let's have a look at the blind flange. A blind flange is a very very often and common used type of flange and almost always necessary whenever you build a piping system. The blind flange is very important to form a piping system because you need it in order to isolate or to close the end of a pipe. So right here I have put two images showing you the actual application of a blind flange within a piping system. This makes it very clear and I hope it's a good illustration for you to understand of how we use the blind flange. So on this slide of my presentation I would like to introduce to you the reducing flange. Reducing flanges are designed for when there is a change in the pipe size. These flanges normally come in blind, slip-on, threaded and weld neck, weld neck flanges. They are available in all pressure classes and provide a good alternative to connecting two different sizes of pipe. This type of flange should not be used if an abrupt transition would create unwanted turbulence, such as at a pump. A reducing flange can be grouped into three main configurations. Type 1, Type 2 and Type 3. The configuration is dedicated by the proximity of the small bore bolt holes to the large bore bolt holes. Each type is designed so that they do not clash and that the nuts can be fitted successfully. Definition and details of blinds and spades. Spectacle blinds. Spectacle blinds are generally applied to permanently separating piping systems or just to connect with each other. A spectacle blind is a steel plate cut into two discs of certain thickness. The two discs are attached to each other by section of steel similar of the nose piece of a pair of glasses. One of the discs is a solid plate and the other is a ring whose inside diameter is equal to that of a flange. The spectacle blind is often used when maintenance work has to be done within a piping system. Please have a look on the image on the left hand side where you can see a spectacle blind in an open position. In this position flow through the pipe is possible. If the spectacle blind is rotated into the close position the pipe is blanked off and no flow is possible. 
the long welding neck flange. The long welding neck flange is usually used for high temperature and pressure applications. You should use a long welding neck flange whenever there is a need for a long hub. When assembling the flange to the pipe, the pipe schedule has to be the same as the flange schedule. Right here you can see a long welding neck flange with its long hub. If you have watched until here, then I say thank you. Thank you taking your time for watching one of the many videos Piping Academy has to offer. Hopefully this basic video about flanges helps you on your journey to become a piping expert in your industry and profession. Our highest of goals is to equip you with knowledge that enables you to solve problems faced in your daily work tasks. Hence, thank you once more and enjoy additional bonus study material for flanges. Also, please feel free to visit our website for more valuable hands-on knowledge. So right here we have the orifice flange. On this image you can see the orifice flange together with its single components. Orifice flanges with class 300 come in threaded, slip-on and weld neck end types. Beginning from class 600 to class 2500 this flange has welding neck end types. To receive more information on the orifice flange and dimensions, you can pick up the ASME B16.36. The next type of flange we want to have a look at is the anchor flange. The anchor flange is also a special type of flange. The anchor flange is embedded in concrete to prevent movement of the pipe. The engineer might use this anchor flange whenever there is a river crossing, points of directional change and to secure a subsea piping structure. And finally the welder flange or nipple flange. These type of flanges are a combination of welding neck flanges and a weldolet or nippolet. You can use a weldo flange or nipple flange whenever there is a need for branch connections. The branch connection on the run pipe is a welding connection and is suitable for low temperature and pressure applications. Please help me to provide more solutions, answers and ideas to our piping community. Let me know on what topics you would like to watch more videos on what questions you have and in what areas Piping Academy may support you in. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and please give this video a thumbs up. Goodbye and until our next video.